Now before I jump into the student overview, um, I just want to give you a little bit of a general background in Alex. Uh, now I'm here at the Alex website, alex.com, where students and teachers who use Alex can log in. Uh, but there's also lots of information here for people like you all who are interested in Alex. Uh, you could read about the research behind Alex and how schools have found success using Alex. Now, Alex itself is an online math program. It is an acronym. It stands for Assessment and Learning in Knowledge Spaces. And what Alex does is it starts off each student with an initial assessment that adapts to their knowledge, then creates a unique learning path for each student based on that assessment. Now, all sorts of data and reports are generated for teachers as students work and learn in Alex. And those are what Ashley's going to be discussing with you all a bit later on in the webinar. Now, to show you all the student experience, I'm going to be walking you through a sample uh, student account here. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend to be um, a pre-algebra student. Um, that sort of was the general response from most of our audience that they worked with 612. So pre-algebra is a typical um, 612 course. And so I'm just uh, using the sample student account here. Now the first time um, students log into Alex, they're going to be guided through this answer editor tutorial where they learn how to enter their answers into Alex. So I'm just going to follow the prompts on the screen here, uh, practicing inputting my answer so that as a student I can get comfortable using these input tools. Now we want students to feel comfortable with the Alex environment. Um, and it's especially important because Alex avoids multiple choice questions. So the vast majority are going to be free response. So I'm not going to be selecting A, B, C, or D. I'm going to be entering in an algebraic expression, um, at actually specifying the numerator and the denominator. Um, depending on the course, I may also need to use some virtual tools like this pencil, ruler, and eraser here, and actually graph this line. So students and Alex aren't losing that paper and pencil functionality. And it's also a great way for them to prepare for those standardized assessments, as a lot of them are computer-based and using similar, similar virtual tools. All right, so that tutorial um, takes a few minutes, and the student will do it the first time uh, they log in. And then they're going to be brought here to this initial assessment. Now, this initial assessment is very important to Alex. This is where Alex is going to determine by asking about 25 questions precisely what the student knows and doesn't know, but most importantly, what they're ready to learn. So I'm currently a pre-algebra student. So this initial assessment is going to ask me questions from all over pre-algebra. So I'm just going to go ahead here and click Next. And before I jump into this assessment, I just want to point out these two buttons down here, Solve and Fast Forward. These are just for me. Um, actual students don't have access to a Solve Answers button or Fast Forward. Um, this is just so I can navigate a bit more uh, smoothly through the student account. All right, so question number one uh, for the student is going to be pulled from somewhere in the middle of the curriculum. So it's not a predetermined question. Um, so if my neighbor is sitting next to me also taking pre-algebra assessment, uh, question number one will be different. Now it's just going to start in the middle of the curriculum and see how the student does and then sort of go from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the solve button and demonstrate a correct answer. The student knows how to solve it, they can go ahead and put their answer and click next. And we can see that we're moved along to the next question with no feedback. So Alex tells the student you won't be told if your answers are correct. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate an incorrect answer here. And we can see that similarly, I moved along to the next question with no feedback. Now this assessment um, is constantly adapting to my answers. So if I'm answering a lot of questions correctly, the questions that I see are going to become a little bit more challenging because Alex is going to push me further into the curriculum because it wants to see how far I have knowledge. 
Now, if I'm answering questions incorrectly, I'll see more basic questions because the assessment's going to backpedal through the curriculum. So it's constantly adapting to the student so that it efficiently determines precisely what they know and don't know. Now, we've also got a button here that says, I haven't learned this yet. So students can click that button if they ever come across a topic that is unfamiliar to them. Um, if we haven't addressed this topic before, I don't need to take a wild guess or frustrate myself. I can simply click, I haven't learned this yet. And Alex will take that information and adapt and use it to determine my best learning path. So the student will work through this assessment. Um, I'm going to fast forward so we don't have to spend all of our time on this assessment here. And I'm going to preload the results. So um, I'm just going to be pretending that I had done moderately well on that initial assessment. Now, after that initial assessment, the student is brought to this pie chart here, which represents their learning. So this is a pre-algebra pie chart, and it's divided into seven slices. And each slice represents a different section or different topic area of the course. Now, if I look at one particular pie slice, there's going to be a dark section and a light section. So the dark part shows what I know. These are the topics that I was able to master on my assessment. And the light part, these are the topics I'm going to learn. So I wasn't able to master these topics, but I'm going to practice them in Alex's learning mode. Now, in order to navigate the learning mode, the students use this pie. So it's also a visual tool um, in addition to a navigational tool. And the student's going to decide um, which pie slice they'd like to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and come visit this red slice here, um, proportion, percent, data, and probability. And 14 of 51 tells me that there's 51 topics in this pie slice. And of those 51 topics, I currently know 14. So that's the knowledge that I came in with. Alex gave me credit for the topics that I already know. So it's kind of meeting me at my own unique starting point. So if I can do the math correctly, I have about 37 uh, unlearned topics in this red pie slice. And what I'll do now is I'll mouse over the slice, and I have some topics that I can click on. Now, I don't have all 37 of those topics, those unlearned topics. It looks like I have about 10. And the reason for that is because Alex is only going to make available to me topics that I'm ready to learn. So when I took that initial assessment and Alex asked me questions from all over the curriculum, it was not only determining my gaps, but it was also determining of the topics I don't know, which ones do I have the prerequisite knowledge to learn. So these are my ready to learn topics, and I can click on any of them and move into Alex's learning mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on constructing a histogram. And as soon as I click the topic, I'll be brought into Alex's learning mode here. And it's going to present me with a sample problem. So here is a problem. Um, we use a computer algorithm to generate these problems. So if my neighbor has also clicked on this topic in his pie chart, his question is going to be a little bit different than mine. Now I'm instructed to draw a histogram for these data. I have an input feature here where I can create the histogram. And Quick Help is available just to offer me assistance with using the input tools. Um, so if maybe I'm not comfortable drawing a histogram, I can always click on that Quick Help, take a brief tutorial before I tackle the problem. All right, so back at the problem here, um, I'm going to go ahead now and use the Solve button, but I'm going to um, get one of these bars incorrect. So maybe I think I know how to work this problem out, but I make a little mistake along the way. But I'm going to go ahead and submit my answer. And students can do that. If they want to um, try to solve the problem, if they think they know how to do it, they can go ahead and put their answer and click Next. And what we see is that I'm given immediate feedback. So Alex tells me some of the frequencies are correct, but some are incorrect. So I should try to answer again. So in the learning mode, um, unlike assessment mode, I am given immediate feedback. So Alex tells me right away um, that I need to fix something. 
So I could go ahead and maybe try again if I realize what my mistake is. Um, but I'm going to pretend that I'm not sure where I went wrong. And if that's the case, I can click this Explain button, which offers me a detailed explanation that walks me through how to solve this problem. So I'll see the original question, and then it will explain to me how to find these intervals of equal size, how to count the values that fall into each interval, and to draw the corresponding bar height. And it will give me the final answer in a box here. So these explanation pages um, offer a step-by-step -step detailed explanation. Also, um, hyperlinked words link to the Alex Dictionary. So if the student has, you know, needs a little background on histogram um, or any of the other terms, they can always click these hyperlinked words for more detail. And teachers can also upload their own resources to these explain pages. So if you've got a great video or PDF or website uh, that goes over histograms and you want your students to see it when they're working on this topic, you can upload that resource. And when students click explain, they'll see the topic. Or I'm sorry, they'll see the resource that you've added for that topic. So a nice way to personalize the Alex experience a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead here and click practice again. So once the student reads through the explanation, they'll click practice and they'll see another sample problem. So I'll go ahead and view solve to get this one correct. And we can see there's that positive feedback. So good, practice again. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue on um, getting these questions correct. And eventually, I will get a message that tells me, if you are correct, I'll add this problem to your pie. So this is a nice message. It means that if I can get this next question correct without help from the Explain button, I'll finally get to my Done button. So this Done button means that I can click Done and go back to my pie chart, which has now been updated with my progress. So we can see um, this red pie slice. Previously, I knew 14 of the 51 topics, and now I know 15. And the dark portion has grown a little bit. So every time I make progress and add a topic in the learning mode, this pie here is going to update. So it's constantly updating to give students that visual idea of where they're at in their course. And it's really motivating for students to have this pie chart. It really helps them feel in control of their learning. Now, one really important thing about Alex is that it is a cycle of learning and assessment. So when I first logged in and I took that initial assessment that determined what I know and don't know and what I'm ready to learn, I was working in the assessment mode. And now that I'm done with the assessment, working from my pie chart, clicking on topics and adding them to my pie, I'm working in the learning mode. So I just added one topic in the learning mode. After I add approximately 20 topics and spend at least five hours working in Alex, I'll trigger a progress assessment. So Alex will automatically give me this assessment, and I'll be back in the assessment mode. And Alex is going to give me some topics that I've recently mastered to see how I've retained them. And if it appears that I've forgotten or haven't fully retained any of these topics, they'll go back in my pie chart so that I can review them. So by cycling students through learning and assessment, Alex is going to seamlessly give students the review material they need to fully master these topics. So just a, a few other things I'll highlight about the student side. Um, students can always get review by clicking this review link here. And one great thing is that anytime there's a hyperlinked topic name, and this is true for the student and the teacher module in Alex, uh, you can click it, and it's going to generate a unique practice problem. So students can do um, as much review as they'd like just by clicking these hyperlinked topic names. Uh, there is an internal message center for Alex where students and teachers can communicate with each other. Um, and students can also generate PDF worksheets in case they're not going to have access to the computer or the Internet. Um, these worksheets are going to be individualized to them and the answer key gets sent to the teacher, so the teacher can go ahead and grade that worksheet. Uh, but a great way to get Alex practice if they don't necessarily have uh, you know, unlimited access to a computer. 
All right, so at this point, I'm going to wrap up the student side and introduce my colleague, Ashley. Um, and she's going to be addressing some of those pain points that you all responded to in our poll question earlier uh, as she guides you through some of these teacher resources in Alex. Now, Ashley uh, spent six years working in the classroom and now works here at Alex, helping customers create successful and meaningful implementations. So, Ashley, uh, thanks for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending today. Um, thanks for also uh, doing our poll. And I saw that the number one pain point was addressing a variety of learning gaps, which is always a very hard thing to do. One of the great things about Alex that Emily just introduced you to on the student side was that it's automatically individualized for each student. So that already takes a little bit of that pain point away from you. But we have a couple reports that are also going to help you with that as well. So I'm going to go into those reports right now and just show you those. So if we go to the reporting section, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Alex Pie Report. Now, the Alex Pie Report is going to show you your entire class pie, and then it's going to have a percentage mastery here. If you click on the percentage mastery for any of these pie slices, or even view all of them, it's going to break it down into three columns, percentage mastered, not mastered, and ready to learn. Now, we can see here I have a lot of students who have mastered these topics already. So if I'm wanting to address some learning gaps, and I'm going to cover addition of large numbers, and I see all my students already know how to do it, it's not the most efficient use of my time. I need to look at where are my students not knowing how to do something, what pie slices are their mastery levels lower in. So I can use this dynamic report to find out that information. I see that only 24% is in functions and graphs. I can come in here and find those ready to learn percentages and identify those topics that they don't know how to do, but they're ready to learn. And when I click on those, I can see exactly which students are ready to learn this topic. So it makes it very easy for me to identify learning gaps and group students together who are ready to learn these at all times. Now, again, this is a dynamic report. So every time your student's in here working, this report is updating to reflect the most current information about your students, your students' knowledge, and what they're currently ready to learn. One of the other reports that is great for this is our standards report. Now, the standards report is specifically going to show you the areas in the standards where the students you know, have some gaps. So if we go in and look at that, we can see, OK, there's only 14% mastery in this specific area. This is a great report to look at towards the end of the year, especially when standards time and testing is coming up, so that you can identify those areas and those standards that need to be addressed. Now again, if you click on any of the percentages, it'll break down and show you which students know how to do that standard, which do not, and which Alex topics correlate with that standard so you know exactly what you need to cover or have them do in Alex when they get to that point of having that um, topic available for them so that they know how to do that standard. So those are a couple of the great things that you can do to identify those learning gaps and really make it customized for your students. Another thing you guys mentioned was that you know differentiating learning for students while still following a textbook is very hard. And one of the features that we have in Alex is actually textbook integration. So it keeps kind of the same nature of Alex, but what it lets you do is choose your textbook. So I'm going into that right now. It's under class summary and then class content. And here you can choose to integrate a textbook and select your textbook from the drop-down. What we do is we reorganize Alex content to go along with your textbook. So if you need to cover content in a specific chapter order, this allows you to do that while still using Alex and the assessments and progress assessments and things like that that keep the students um, making sure that their retention of the topics is there. You can also set objectives that are chapter based. So it's again going along with your custom objectives of your textbook. Or you can create your own objectives. 
So maybe you want to use this textbook, but you want to cover things in a specific order. It gives you that flexibility and still, again, relating back to your textbook. Your objectives can have end dates or they can be a mastery level. So it's up to you how you want to use it. It's very flexible, but still, again, lets you relate it to your textbook. Now, Emily showed you the student side, so you're going to have to picture this because I don't have a student account up right now. Um, if a student is on an explain page, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's going to be a little reference box there for them. Now, if you've integrated any resources into your classroom, it will have those resources you've provided. But also, if you've integrated a textbook, it will tell the students where in their textbook they can go to get more information and more detail about the topic they're currently working on. So if they're working on Chapter 2, it'll say, see Chapter 2, Section 1.2 for more information. So again, it's just another great reference for the students um, using their textbook. So the next pain point we talked about um, that was a problem for you guys was ensuring students stay on task while using technology. I'm going to go into this really cool report we have. If you haven't heard of it or used it or seen it, it's called the Time and Topic Report. And we know how easy it is for students to take advantage of online programs and navigate to other websites, but still trying to look like they're working. Well, Alex is you know, very smart, and we have this report that knows the difference between working time and time that they're trying to look like they're working. Um, so we can determine, again, an accurate reflection of their working time, and it'll be displayed in this report. So I'm going to break down the report a little bit here. You can see your student roster on the left-hand side. It'll total their time in Alex. So the entire time they spent in the program, we'll give that to you. Their last login date and their total time for the date range you've selected. Now, you can customize this date range up here. You can do one week. You could do a month. Um, you can do up to 20 weeks worth of data. It's up to you how you want to view that information. I'm only doing a week right now. And you can see each day how much time they spent and how many topics they mastered and attempted. Now, if we say they spent 12 minutes working in Alex, that means that they were in the learning mode, attempting problems, reading explained pages, actually working. We are not going to give them credit for stuff that they are not doing. So if they think they can open a problem, let the browser sit there for 15, 20 minutes to make it look like they're working, we will not give them credit for that. After they're inactive for about 10 to 15 minutes, Alex takes a look at it and then decides, you know, do we give them credit for those last 10 or 15 minutes or do we log them out, make them log back in, not give them credit for it and start the timer over again. So again, it, Alex is very smart, and this is a time that does reflect their actual working time. With that being said, it also reflects their time spent in assessment. Um, we know that assessments take time and that it may look like the student's not doing anything, but they are spending time in an assessment. So we want you to know they are working, so we do give them credit for that time as well. If you wanted to see more in-depth information to make sure they're staying on task, there's a way to do that by selecting a specific student. So if I wanted to take a look at David here, if I click on his name, it's going to take me into his individualized report that breaks down his week, all of his topics he's attempted and mastered each day. Now, Tuesday, I want to look at a little more closely because he attempted six topics but only mastered two. So what was he doing for those other four topics? You know, was he just wasting time making it look like he was working? Was he struggling? I want to make sure that David is staying on task. So here, just real quickly, if you click on it, it gives you the list of the topics he attempted and mastered. The mastered one has the asterisk sign. But if you look at more detail or you want to look at more detail, you can click on the date. Now, the date's going to give you the learning sequence log. Since we're in the free trial, it doesn't have a great picture, so I'm going to switch over to an actual picture of the learning sequence log. And here you can see, again, the date, 
the time, the result. Okay, so here you can see how much time did he spend in between problems. Did he spend 10 minutes on the explain page? You know, maybe that's a cause for concern. Maybe he was goofing off and doing something else, or maybe he really was trying to read the explain page and complain, compare it to his notes. Um, so this is a way for you to determine that. If I see patterns that keep reoccurring in student sequence logs, um, that they are constantly spending, you know, 10 minutes on an explain page, I'm going to think that most likely they figured out that's the amount of time that they can spend before the system's going to say, hey, get working or I'm not going to give you credit. So I'm going to watch them maybe a little more closely in the classroom than possibly other students. This is also a great way for you to see if students are topic surfing. So it makes them look like they're working, but they're not. You would see them open a topic and maybe attempt it or click explain page, go to another topic, click it, explain or attempt it, and just keep switching between topics. So again, this gives you a very, very great and full picture of what your students are doing, are they staying on task, and do I really need to worry about um, what any of my students are doing in the program. Now those were our top three pain points. Since we have a little bit of time left over, um, I just wanted to touch on another one of them, which was um, the grading perspective in Alex, which I know it's really hard to figure out how am I going to grade It's differentiated for each student. What would I need to look at? One of the most common ways that instructors are grading with Alex is a combination of time spent on Alex and topics attempted. So you would use the same exact report that we have here at the class level, which is the time and topic report, and this will help you determine that. Now, on average, your students should be spending roughly about three to five hours a week, and they should be doing at least two to three topics per hour. Now, those are just averages, two to three topics per hour. You'll probably see the top of count a little bit higher at the beginning of the year and get closer to the lower end of, you know, two per hour at the end of the year. Now, the reason for that is because when you start a course that sometimes the beginning material is a little bit easier, it's not as involved, and as you get through the course material, it gets a little bit harder. It takes a little more time to work out the problems. So, by saying two to three topics per hour the entire year, that's a safe way of just having, you know, an on average expectation. Now, the great way that you can add this up real quickly is you come in here, you choose it for the week, you know how much time they need to spend based on how much time per week they are assigned Alex. Let's just say it's three hours. And then I'm saying, all right, so you've got three hours and I want three topics per hour. So I'm going to say you have to do at least nine topics per week. I can easily look at this column here and say, okay, you know, Kai did only an hour and a half and he got seven out of nine. So I can figure out some sort of grading scheme that goes along with this. And this works throughout the entire year. So it's something that you can do weekly. You can do set monthly goals. You can set quarterly goals or you can set a yearly goal. So maybe you're looking at the big picture. At the end of the year, I expect you to have at least put in X amount of hours and learn X amount of topics. Another way that teachers are grading in Alex is in the reporting section under progress. And I like to show this because, especially since it's the end of the year and we're looking at how much did the student gain over the year, how much progress did they really make. This report lets you view it from multiple different perspectives. I like to look, especially this time of the year again, it's the end of the year, at the full progress over the last 12 months. Now granted, your students might not have been using Alex for 12 months, it might have only been nine, but that's okay. It's just going to take their initial assessment all the way up to their most recent assessment and display that for you. So you very easily can see that initial assessment on the bottom, the blue is their assessment score, the green is their learning, and the yellow is everything else they need to learn. So you can, again, very easily see that assessment score, which was 26%, and 
and their most recent assessment score, which was 59%. So I can individualize my grading system based on the progress each of these students have made. Maybe set individual goals for them or a year-end goal that they must get to at least 80% or higher to get an A. So these are all just great reports to keep track of your students make sure they're making the progress, and also, again, individualize it for each of them. So those are the only ones I was going to touch on. We want to leave a few minutes here at the tail end for some questions so I can uh, point some of those things out inside the instructor module. I'm going to ask Emily, since she's handling the question and answers, was there anything that came in that needs to be addressed? Hey, Ashley, yeah, we had uh, a couple questions. Um, one person said that uh, they really like all these reports, and they're wondering if there's a way that they can see uh, all the information at once without having to go into separate individual reports. Well, they are in luck. Uh, we have this report under the reports section called Custom Reports. Now, there's two different ways to access this. So if I access Custom Reports with a specific class, I'm pulling multiple um, data points for just this class. I can also click and go back to my home button and pull it at my um, instructor level so I can include multiple classes on the same report. So you can choose whether you want to do each class separately or all together. Um, but when you come in here, you can create a template and basically, like I said, you're pulling these data points that you want to put into this report with the information you want. So you can come in here and add assessment performance. So maybe you want that initial assessment and the most recent assessment. Pi Mastery, maybe you want to know where are they right now when I'm scheduling this report? What are their total amount of topics they know? What's their standards look like? If I've made any assignments, I can add those. If I'm using the grade book, again, I can add that as well. And especially time and topic, I can pull those daily, weekly, or monthly totals, um, and it'll give me that breakdown. When I schedule this report, I can choose for it to be a one-time report. So again, since it's the end of the year, maybe I'm pulling everything together for over the past nine months so that I can have it in one Excel spreadsheet. Or if you do this in the beginning of the year or mid-year, you can set it up as a reoccurring report that can happen um, as you would like it so that you're constantly getting these data uh, points sent to you so that you're keeping track of all of kind of the report information together in one place. So that was a great question. Yes, we do have something. Um, and if you want more information on custom reports, I believe we have um, something in our training center that you can go and you can read uh, additional information on that. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Um, a couple other questions came in. Um, they're kind of similar. One um, teacher has asked for recommendations on structuring um, class time between instruction time and Alex time. And another teacher has asked if Alex can be used for summer school. Okay, so um, for summer school, yes, absolutely. We see that used all the time, um, especially because, you know, it's so individualized for each student. It's going to target those gaps and have them work where they're at to, to catch up and get through that course material that they're trying to, to make up over a summer period. It might be a little more intense than a school year because you have a shorter amount of time. So you would really have to determine what is the goal for my student? What do I want them to accomplish over this summer period uh, before next school year? And, and have that apparent so the students know how much time they need to work through this to prepare for their next class or to finish up you know, their previous material. So yes, we definitely have it used over the summer. Now, as far as a combination between how do I use it for online time and class instruction time, um, you know, usually we see, we've seen many different ways that teachers can do this. Um, it really is whatever works best for you. It might be a little bit of a trial and error um, of trying, you know, half an hour of instruction for the entire class on the highest ready-to-learn topic, and then 
the rest of the period on the computer. You might do small group instruction, so they're each in small groups and you're rotating them and you're you know, equaling out the time for each group. But one of the best things that I could recommend is going to alex.com. I'm going to bring it up right here and clicking on K-12 and implementation strategies. This implementation strategies area is a database where a bunch of customers have offered us their strategies on how they're using it in their classroom, what their classroom looks like, how do they grade, what are some best practices. And you can come in here and search by all these different fields or put in a keyword and read about it. So you might get some great ideas on how to break up your class time um, based on the way that these teachers are successfully implementing Alex as well. Were there any other questions? Um, I think so. We had actually a suggestion come in from a teacher um, who wanted to share one of his implementation strategies. He said that he provides uh, direct instruction uh, Monday through Wednesday, and then on Thursday and Friday, students work in Alex. Um, so there's another potential way you could structure uh, you know, instruction time versus individual time in Alex. Right, right. That sounds great. Um, I think that's it for most of the questions. Um, if you guys have any more, you can definitely submit them through. Um, oh, it looks like we had one come in. Uh, somebody would like to see how you can add those resources. So those explain oh, okay. page resources that we mentioned. Oh. Yes, so the resources are specific to a course. So you want to first make sure that you're in the Alex course that you want to add the resources to. So I'm in pre-algebra. If you go into class administration, you can access it from a couple different ways. You can go to class summary and scroll down to the bottom and there's a resources section. Or if you come under class tools, there's also a link directly to the resources. Um, you have to agree that it's okay for these resources to be put in your class. And then here all you do is add them. So you can add a document. You can link to a website. You can add a note. So it's up to you, again, how you want these resources to be available. But I'll just go ahead and put in a couple things. And here you can choose if the students have uh, visibility of these resources. So are they on their resources page and are they accessible through the explain page? You're choosing if you want um, the students to have access to it. And you can link the resources to an entire pie slice by selecting the pie slice or multiple topics. So it's up to you to choose what you want it linked to. And once you save it, when the students are in that topic, they would see that resource that you made available. And you can put multiple resources to the same topics. So if you have a really great video you created and a great PDF that, you know, visually explains a topic to the students, I would add both of them, not one or the other. I would add them both and link it to those resources. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Um, that's it for most of our questions. Uh, I think we can stay on another couple minutes just in case any more do come in. Um, but thank you all for joining us. And Ashley, is there anything you want to say to uh, to close the webinar? No, just thank you everyone for coming today and uh, joining in in the webinar. Please feel free to you know ask additional questions and reach out to us. We're happy to help with everything we can. And also visit our training page, which is through the K-12 Training Center. We have a lot of pre-loaded you know, um, loaded documents and videos on how to do different things inside your account. And we offer some daily overview sessions that answer questions about how to use Alex as well. So we're here to help you as much as possible. And thanks again for coming, everyone. Bye-bye.